In this video, I want to show you an easy way to visualize ionic bonds, which can be very challenging as you're learning chemistry. So let's take a look at one of the easiest things to visualize, I think, and that would be table salt. So table salt is NaCl. And Na, each sodium, is 1 plus. Okay, and it's just usually the one is omitted and you usually just have the plus symbol. So you have Na plus, and I'm going to use a different color, let's say, for the Cl. And you have chlorine, which is Cl minus or one minus, okay? Let's say we're gonna take some table salt and we're gonna dump it into this beaker of water, okay? So I want you to visualize this. We have the sodium and chlorine being added to the solution and they those ions can move around the solution. Now I'm gonna do the chlorine, same thing with the chlorine. We have these chlorine ions moving around the solution. So what's gonna happen is there's gonna be an attraction between the positive and negative charges. So real simply, we can think of it as they're moving around and opposites will, will attract like a magnet. So we have the sodium here moving towards this chlorine, for example, and this chlorine moving towards this sodium. And so th they would combine right here. And then there's no more charge. You have one plus and one minus and together they equal zero. So now that's neutral. So once they're sort of a neutral state, the, chlor the chlorine here will not be attracted to that new pairing and the sodium won't be attracted because this whole thing does not have a charge anymore. It's not positive or negative. Okay, so if we write that up here, a lot of times you'll see a problem like this and it'll say you have sodium and chlorine. What's the resulting formula? Well, in this case, we can see the resulting formula is going to be NaCl. There are no numbers or subscripts that go along with that formula because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. It's one plus, one minus, together they equal zero. So that's an easy example. Let's take a look at a little bit more complicated example. Okay, so in this example, I have now potassium, which is one plus, and I have oxygen, which is two minus. So in the same case here, they're able to float around, visualize them moving around the solution, and they're gonna combine in some way to equal zero or to become neutral. And so how would they do that? Well, let's say that we'd have this potassium here being attracted to this oxygen, okay? But still this oxygen, after that potassium goes over there, that oxygen still would have one more minus charge. And that means maybe this potassium would come over there and be attracted to it. But once that happens, now if I count it up, I have a plus and a plus, so that's two plus, and I have two minus equaling zero. So now these are going to combine in this ratio right here to equal zero. Notice now there's no more charge. I have the same number of pluses and minuses. And so nothing else will be attracted to that molecule. And so in this case, we have K2O. So if it was written as K plus, and you're combining it with oxygen, which is two minus, what would that yield? It would yield... K2O, potassium oxide. Let's look at another example. Now this one looks more complicated, but it's really following the same idea that we've been talking about. So in this case, you'll see a molecule that looks complicated. It's called nitrate. It's called a polyatomic ion because it's made up of a bunch of different ions, but it still overall has a one minus charge. So don't let this intimidate you that it's a larger formula for that polyatomic ion, you just have to look at the charge. And so I have one minus here and I have three plus for each aluminum. So you might see this written as something like this. For a problem, it might say aluminum three plus combining with nitrate, which is one minus, what do you get as the resulting formula? So in this case, I'm going to just see how they combine. I'm going to think about it. I have, let's say this is three plus and this is one minus. So I'm going to say, okay, let's say this minus is attracted to the plus. So now that means that there's two pluses left and maybe this one would go here and this one would go here. And basically what I'm doing is counting up the charges. I want three minus charges to cancel out those three positive charges. So it, they would combine in a ratio like this right there. Let's see if I can do that somewhere else here. Right here, I can maybe just circle these like this. There's another molecule that forms. So these ionic compounds are going to be formed from those combinations and where they're trying to reach a stable state. So now down here, how would I write that? 
well, I have, let's say, how many aluminums do I have? I have one aluminum, but I have three of these polyatomic nitrate ions. And so this is how you write that. You would write AL, and there's only one of them, so I don't need to write a subscript of one. It's just assumed to be one if it's not there. But since I need three of these NO3s, I have to use parentheses. So I'd use parentheses NO3 with a three outside of it like that. So if you've ever seen parentheses in those ionic compounds or in compounds, that's what's happening. You are multiplying this three times the number of those molecules. So we're going to take a look at one more, and this is probably one of the harder ones. And that's because the numbers don't evenly go into each other. And you'll see that in the charges here, which we have a sulfate ion and another aluminum ion. So it might be written as you see down here at the bottom of the screen. And if you try to combine those together, you might think to yourself, oh, well, I don't, I don't see two doesn't go into three. So how do I do that? Well, think about their least common multiple. So the least common multiple for two and three would be six. Okay. So how many do we need of each to get to six? Let's, let's look at that. So if I have two aluminums, that gives me six. And that means I would need three sulfates to get six negatives. Because if I have six positives and six negatives, again, together, that would equal zero. So how could I circle that? Let's see. Um, let's take a look at this one right here. If I circle this and think about how they would combine, is that right? Well, I have nine pluses and I have four minuses. No, that doesn't work. So I have to fix that. That's not right. So let's try that again. Okay. So I need, let's see, how about this? I do six minuses and six pluses. There we go. Okay, so now I did the, the correct ratio. They cancel each other out. I have two, four, six minuses, and I have six pluses. That right there is going to be a stable compound and nothing else will be attracted to it. So then it stops. And so how do you write that as a formula now? Well, I have two aluminums, so I could write Al2. And I have three sulfates, SO4. So three SO4s, I have to use parentheses again and put SO4 with a three outside of that. So that'll do it for this video. I hope that the visualization of these ionic bonds really helps you to understand this and get something that could be intimidating and makes it so that you understand it and actually can do a lot of different problems like this.